from the back of the queue reindeer. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Coming up this week, we are going to go through a list of the do's and don'ts for cyclists over the Christmas period. Things you absolutely must do and things you should most definitely avoid. Come on, mate, you've got to show your face. Can't stay down there forever. <laughs> uh, we've also got a very exciting announcement. We've got a brand new GCN presenter. Uh, not Cy, but find out who that is very soon indeed. There is, of course, a forfeit for the loser. They will be getting a full spray tan and having their nails done. Hey, am I there? Am I there? Am I first? For the results? Oh, no. Come well on done on all making it. Sai loses the challenge <laughs> by just one minute. <laughs> Yes, I want a Mystic HD, but I'm not totally sure. Shut. Not gonna be on. <laughs> takes a bit of time for it to develop. So this uh, this is the tip of the iceberg, and actually uh, it's just gonna get worse for the next eight hours. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Tom Pidcock has skills for days. Here he is becoming the first rider to actually ride this incredibly steep bank at the Dreven Cross on Saturday. Will Tom Pidcock manage to ride this section again? He does! And only having seen Pidcock ride it, did Matthew van der Poel attempt it himself. The same in the sand. Van der Poel takes the line that Pidcock does. No, not many people can get, so they've got one over Matthew van der Poel, have they? Uh, right, now we also learned this week the real price of the new Hope track bike that's being used by British Cycling. A cool £26,000. And unfortunately, you will still need a few of your own bits to complete the build, like pedals, saddle, cranks, chain. That's a lot bars. of money for a bike, isn't it? It Especially is, Especially yeah. one that resembles a Zimmer frame. Although we should stress that this is for the more expensive option of that bike. That is the Sprinter's one, which we figured we'd probably need. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, as Dan mentioned at the beginning of the show, we have some very exciting news. We've got a new GCN presenter! We have indeed. We are very pleased to announce that fresh from the UCI Track World Cup circuit, Manon Lloyd will be joining us as of the 1st of January. Yes, now, we should stress that she is no relation to this particular Lloyd, although when you find out that she's won UCI Track World Cups in Madison and Team Pursuit, you probably make that assumption for yourself. There's not much genetic similarity. Thanks, there. Si. Uh, but not only has she been at the very highest level on the boards, she's also been a professional on the road as well. Yeah, and even dabbled in cyclocross. I'm sure she's gonna be delighted we yeah. chose to use that photo for her intro. Yeah, it's better than this, anyway. Well, that's obvious. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it goes without saying, we are thrilled that Manon has chosen to join our team. Yeah, we absolutely are. Right then, the holiday season is upon us. I believe that's what Christmas is called anyway. And for many of us, it is a brilliant opportunity to get out and spend some time on the bike. For others though, it is a time fraught with conflicts, mistraining and guilt. Yeah, a bit like your pro cycling career, isn't it? Yeah, thanks very much for that slide. Anyway, to help you through this moral maze, we thought we'd bring you a list of do's and don'ts for cyclists over the Christmas period. Yeah. First up, don't put your bike away in the shed. Find some time to get out and ride it, because one of the undisputed best bits of the Christmas period is the quieter roads. It's a rare treat, isn't it, to get out there and have the world to yourself. Yeah, you don't want to take it too far though, because what you don't want to be is that cyclist that prioritises the bike over everything else. Why are you looking like me when you say that? Anyway, you don't need to miss social gatherings now. Here's a quick pro tip. Why not take your indoor trainer to the gathering instead? That way, people can socialise around you, maybe even bring you food and drink, so you could potentially train even harder and longer than you otherwise would do. Plus, if you set it to erg mode, 
you don't even have to think about doing intervals, your trainer sets the resistance for you. So all you gotta do is pedal and then have a nice conversation while you do it. And you wondered why I was looking directly at you. Uh, now, if you do happen to be doing your training at your Christmas party or just there in a normal capacity. I like to call it casual mode. You are such a weirdo. Uh, anyway, don't be that person that chooses to explain the importance of FTP to unsuspecting normal people. Yeah, do not be that guy. Instead, I've actually found considerable conversation mileage in the debate about one by versus two by. So maybe give that okay. one a try instead, yeah. And the other thing as well is if people give you a wide berth at parties, it's actually not the end of the world. You'll find that you're much less likely to get ill if no one wants to talk to you. I would actually agree with you on that yeah. one. Yeah, there's nothing worse than getting ill over the Christmas period. So whether you decide to ride your bike just to socialise or to do a combination of both, make sure you avoid people with coughs and colds at all costs because being ill at that period is going to suck. Yeah, not least because it's going to ruin your form for the Boxing Day race, isn't it? There's always a bike race near you on Boxing Day. Dan, you I know were very partial to a Boxing Day 10 mile yeah. time trial, aren't you? Yeah. You gonna do one this year? No. No. Oh yeah, I might dabble in my first cyclocross oh, race, race of the season. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've been thinking about cross, actually. Something that, that any cross rider, probably any cyclist, should do over Christmas, very excitingly, clean the inside of your washing machine out. You'd be amazed at how much gunk collects in there. Nobody's yeah, and, gonna do that job over the Christmas period. Well, it and anyone who lives with you might be thankful if you do. Right. So uh, yeah, and by the way, I once found a quid in there when I did it, so you might want to give okay, it a Well, go. we're moving quickly on from that one. Now, if you happen to get some nice spangly new Lycra uh, cycling kit for Christmas, what you want to be really wary of is when you take it out on its first ride, because the worst thing you can do is ride in very bad conditions and crash in it and rip it to shreds. Yeah, and it's so easily done, isn't it? So make sure you get at least one ride in it, take it steady, and then, uh, then you'll be all clear. I, I'm ruining the day that I crashed first ride out on my ASOS Windblock tights in 2007. I can't forget that. Well, you can't forget it because you're still riding them 12 years later with a hole in the knee. Well, that's true. I mean, you could avoid crashing at all by not riding your bike, of course, and instead choosing to watch other people ride theirs. For example, Wout van Aert is making his return to competition on the 27th of December, and you'll be able to watch that live on GCN Racing. That's interesting, his comeback's just one day after mine. It is, huh? yeah. And now I'll tell you one thing, even better than watching Wav and make his comeback on GCN Racing, is going for a ride either before it or after it, depending on where you live in the world, because then you have to feel guilty about sitting on the sofa watching bike racing. Yeah, guilt's a big one, actually, isn't it? Oh, it is. In fact, for many cyclists, Christmas is a period of feeling guilt, isn't yep. it? Guilty for celebrating, yep. guilty for what they're eating, guilty for what they're drinking, or maybe guilty for not celebrating, or not drinking, or the aforementioned abandoning of loved ones. But don't feel guilt. Whatever you choose to do over this Christmas period, do it without feeling bad. A absolutely, yeah, 100% serious about this one. If you do decide to overindulge a little over Christmas, then rest easy in the knowledge that it will not matter one jot how many helpings of Christmas pudding you have, come springtime. In fact, it won't even matter come January the 2nd, will no, it? No, probably won't. Although if you decide to go the other way and prioritise bike riding, don't worry about that either because yeah. your friends and your loved ones will, well, they might forgive you in time. Like, yeah. It's not quite as guaranteed as burning off the Christmas pudding. No, no, that is true. Uh, right, now make sure you let us know in the comments section if there are any Christmas pitfalls that you are gonna be particularly wary of this year, either having made them before or witness someone else make them. I'm looking forward to reading those, Dan. Absolutely. On Christmas Day, perhaps. Uh, right then. Now, we have some very, very, very exciting news here at GCN. If you're on social media over the weekend, you might have seen a post about this already. But basically, we are getting together with our mates at GMBN to hold a proper bike festival. Four days of epic riding, road, mountain bike, gravel, plus loads of live events, parties, music, and a whole load more. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome, I yeah. think, isn't it? It's all gonna take place over the weekend of the 18th to the 21st of June. And the venue is the beautiful Alpine Resort of Salbach in Austria, where actually we had a decent event uh, just back in August. Mm -hmm. Now, if you'd like to know more, you need to head over to globalbikefestival.com, where you'll be able to sign up for a newsletter, which will give you all the latest news, of course. Uh, but you'll also there be able to get access to the early bird prices. Yeah, awesome, exciting stuff, isn't it? Right then, one person, Dan, who is gonna have to watch what they eat and drink over Christmas, although they probably don't have to worry too much about getting ill, do they, is Ollie, because he's gonna have to get 
everything he can to beat Eddie Merckx in his hour of power. Let's get an update. <laughs> All right, this week's been a rough week um, and not much activity, as you may have seen if you follow me on Strava. Um, and that's because I managed to get a nasty stomach bug, like some gastroenteritis, and um, it completely wiped me out. Like, I've just been physically unable to do anything, let alone training. Um, and it's just been massively frustrating. You know, when you, your motivation to train is high and also this is quite a pressing challenge, it doesn't feel like there's any time to waste. It's, uh, it's been pretty pretty tough going. But something that has helped is the Sufferfest, which is quite unique, has a mental training aspect. Um, and so that's been pretty good at sort of keeping me positive. I mean, one, one silver lining to this massive toilet-shaped cloud is the fact that I've managed to lose three kilos. <laughs> not ideal but you know there we go anyway hopefully I can get back on training soon and uh, and get back to, to back, back on track uh, I'll see you next time hopefully with more positive news it is now time for your weekly GCN inspiration. This is where you submit your inspirational cycling photos and videos we pick our favourite three and they will win one of three prizes which this week are £10 for third £40 a second and £100 to spend on whatever you want on the GCN online store if you are the big winner. Now, I noticed you didn't get around to fixing this one. That no, and I probably day, won't if I'm completely honest. Si. Uh, right then, in third place this week is Breezy Badger. Uh, on my commute home, I was stopped by this amazing sunset. Again, it's in the Wienerwald side. Oh, Sausage World. Brilliant. Uh, no, uh, Vienna Forest, isn't it? Wienerwald. Um, that is an absolute stunner of a photo. It's a competitive week this week, isn't it, Dan? Mm. This, a worthy winner of a £10 voucher, but wowzers, that's a that's a pearl of a shot. Uh, right, in second place, we've got this one uh, from Mike Addington. Uh, what was supposed to be a relatively easy ride turned into a monster climb of 7,000 feet. A must do for anyone on Gran Canaria. Yeah, that does sound like Gran Canaria, doesn't it? Mm. And look at that photo. Woo! It's been a few years, when did we go there? 2018, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, not as long ago, so I think well, I miss it. I my memory's fading fast. But yeah, that's a lovely photo and a lovely place to ride your Absolutely. bike. Absolutely, look at that. Oh, look at that blue sky and warm weather. Anyway, right, £40, 40 pounds for you, Mike. Uh, but with the big £100 prize in first place this week is Calatorlan. Calato now, if I pronounced it correctly, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, just before 8 a.m., heading for work, I'm lucky to get this view on my way in, just outside of Stockholm in Sweden. We weren't sure whether to believe there was a sunrise yeah, at that time in the morning. We, we just this checked was another it on Google. Shot one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but apparently there is. Yeah, so 8.45 we, the we sunrise. We are awarding you the £100. Uh, and well deserved, I think you'll say, because that is yet another stunning photo. Isn't it just? And what a cool ride to work as well. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. As a rent. Does Bowie, do I match the um, £100? Uh, no, you're way more orange oh. than that orange £100 gift voucher. Great. Uh, right, before we move on, a reminder of how to submit your inspirational cycling photos and videos. Uh, two ways to do so, the uploader, link to which is in the description below, or you can use the app. Now speaking of the app, all the inspirational photos from this week's show, and indeed the hacks and bodges that we're going to come on to a little bit later, are in one handy segment of the app. So scroll across the top part to the right until you get to shows, click on this week's show, and they'll all be in there for you to vote on. Happy days. Right then. Time for a little update on Dan's adventure, the quest to ride 1,474 kilometers uh, in the month before Christmas, uh, owing to the very rash post that you put up on the app uh, saying you'd ride a kilometer for every like. It was a well-liked post. Anyway, where are you at, at the moment, mate? Nearly there? I'm at about 1,418, I think. I worked out, I've got 56 to go. Yeah, well, seeing as today uh, is almost the shortest day uh, of the year, we thought it was the appropriate time to do the longest commute. Uh, so, hopefully by the time you watch this, Dan will have ticked over all the kilometres because we would have ridden all the way home, all 68 kilometres yeah. of it. Fingers crossed. Yeah, uh, but if you don't see anything uh, like a video now, we, it was raining and we haven't done it. Looks like we're doing it, Si. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I don't know why I've got sunglasses on, but still, it's pitch black out there. But not raining. <laughs> no, it's a little bit chilly, but we can do this, mate. Yeah, you're 68, flying at the minute. 68, well, you don't know yet. 68 kilometres. Yeah. Big hill to start. Right, let's go. 
Where are we, Si? Don't know, mate. No, I've got no idea either. Tell you what, though, it looks pretty arty right now. This isn't actually sepia, this is just dark, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, and you're no longer orange, amazingly. <laughs> uh, no, we were reckoning we're about a third of the way through the ride, uh, so we're checking back in review, but we'll check back out again now and back in another third of the way. We've been for us three pubs, I think, so far, and Si's not let me go in any. No, but we that. might go into one at the end. Not only that, we've been flying, haven't we, mate? I think so. Yeah. Feels like it. Yeah, good old dark. Oh, I see. Well, the bell's going. Uh, I've got 2.4 k's to go now until I've completed uh, my challenge. It's not far, is it? How does it feel, Dan? Uh, it feels good. It feels like I deserve a pint or two with you. I think you, des I think you do deserve a pint or two, mate. Yeah. yeah. It's been a good ride, though, hasn't oh, it? We've been awesome. licking along at a good pace. My battery light's almost run out. Um, it's been on full power the whole way, but so have I. I've just outlasted my light. <laughs> we made the pub. We did. We've got a pint each. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Congratulations, uh, Dan. Thank you. Uh, so we did 68 k's and that takes me over my kilometres for likes, so job done. Uh, one more ride tomorrow morning with a load of kids, including size hopefully, who turns yeah. up at Moors Valley. Uh, but it's been a great adventure, really. It has. And almost 10 grand raised for World Bicycle Reef, so thank you very much everyone for your support. Well done, Dan. I think you deserve a round of applause for that, mate. Oh, cheers. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're going to start with some more news from Zwift, because after last week's announcement of the winner of the Women's Zwift Academy, this week we had the announcement of the winner of the Men's Academy. Out of 60,000 entrants, New Zealand's Drew Christiansen has emerged as the winner of a professional contract with the feeder team of NTT, formerly Dimension Data. That's a lot of entrants. Isn't it, just? Isn't it? Imagine being able to win something fair and square out of 60,000 people. Well, I can't really, but he must be quite a talent. He must Drew. be. Look forward to young Drew, he's only 18. I look forward to seeing how he gets on. Mm. All right, I'm going to stick with indoor training for a little bit longer. There was an exciting announcement last week from RGT Cycling. Now, this is a virtual online cycling platform that for a long time has been in beta mode, but has now officially launched. And it's going to be free for users to use. As uh, so you can do any of the eight courses whenever you want, as much as you want, and you're also going to have the ability to join group rides and races. That's right. There is also a premium subscription tier as well, where among many other things, you get access to a whole archive of structured training sessions, perhaps that you could do at a Christmas party, uh, or, um, or not or, and rather, you also have the option of creating so-called magic road, so like a virtual road of any GPX file from real life that you send into them. How We're cool gonna have a, it's very cool. We're gonna have a closer look at RGT cycling over on GCN Tech in the new year. That's a lot of talk about indoor cycling, but what we shouldn't forget Get, are those winter warriors who are still outside riding on the road. Yeah, Canadians. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this piece of news over on CBC caught our attention. So certain districts of Montreal are trialling a new technique for clearing snow from bike paths, which is going to make it even easier for Canadians to keep riding their bikes at minus 20 or below. Yeah, as if they need any help. <laughs> you guys have got it dialed already. Apparently, Dan, the secret source to this new method uh, is it's actually a sweeper combined with a brine solution that's mm. then on, on the tarmac. Uh, and uh, according to the local councillor, Marianne Giguere, it's totally worth it. She said, if you plough it, they will come. Mm. Anyway, we are going to look forward to warmer climbs now yeah. because last week at their team launch, Jumbo Visma announced their intentions for the 2020 season and it would appear their intention is to win the Tour de France. Yeah, now you might be asking, well, what gives you that impression, guys? Uh, and uh, well, it's this basically their star rider for the Giro d'Italia, Dylan Gronewegen, mm. their star rider for the Vuelta, Stephen Kreisweik. And then for the Tour de France, Dan? Primoz Roglic, Tom de Moulin, and Stephen Kreisweig. Oh, wow. uh, then they've got Tony Martin, who's got Ooh. a bit of an engine. Yeah. Wout van Aert, he's all right. As yeah, well, not bad. And then on the climbs, Sepp Kuss, Robert Hessing, and Lawrence de Plus. Wowzers. They are putting all their eggs in one basket there, aren't they? But why not? Mm. I mean, we've seen, haven't we? The old one, <laughs> two, three really does work in cycling, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't really, Si, does it? It hasn't worked for Mobistar for many years, has it? The one, no. two. That works. Yeah. Don't know, we saw that with Wiggins and Froome many yeah, years did, ago. Yeah. We saw that with Froome and Geraint Thomas, both on the podium yeah. last year. This year, the one two with Geraint Thomas and Egan Bernard, and yeah. the one two of us with Jens Fox. My goodness. Yeah. Equal team leaders going into that. You were slightly yeah. stronger on the day, so it worked for you. But uh, yeah. It was touch and go on it whether he was going to be able to bring you back, but then when he did, whoa! Yeah. I went. Oh, I cracked him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, did, anyway, yeah. good luck to Jumbo Visma in 2020. Absolutely. Yeah, you can definitely say, can't you? It's cracking to have another team with. Unarguably, the same amount of firepower as Team Ineos. In all seriousness, 
I cannot wait for next year's Tour de France if they manage to get those eight riders to the start of the race yeah. in top form. It's gonna be brilliant. Everybody, happy holidays. Here in Massachusetts, the sun is shining. There is a little bit of snow on the ground, so we might get a white Christmas. If you didn't know, GCN Racing has so much great coverage coming up all through the Christmas period, also known as the cursed period. There's gonna be a ton of racing on GCN, the World Cups, Super Prestige, DVV Trophy, Effius Cross. It is gonna be going down, so check in with Marty and I. Also, if you guys haven't yet checked out season one of the podcast, we just wrapped it up. I think we have eight episodes in the can with all of the top riders from the world, E.V. Richards, Toon Ertz, Quinton Edermans, Lars Vanderhaar, Katarina Nash, Katie Compton, some really great fun stories, so I hope you guys will check them out. See you over on the racing channel. Check it out, GCN Racing, and talk to you soon. Right, we've got some uh, some winners for you now from our amazing no pins giveaway uh, that we ran a couple of weeks ago now, actually, haven't we? So yeah, four lucky winners of an amazing bundle from the people at no pins. Uh, skin suit, race suit, some mega aero socks, and some mega aero overshoes too. I might do the boxing day 10 if I'm one of the winners. I'm yeah, you, sure. you might go fast, actually, if you wore that stuff. <laughs> uh, right, the winners are, drum roll please. We'll do all right in case you don't put the sound effects on afterwards. Uh, Simon Goosens from Belgium. Well done, Simon. That might be, might be Goosens. Anyway, Edgar Barrion from the US, Paul Lee from the US, and Matt Donovan from here in Great Britain. There you go, congratulations. Yeah, that is a cool prize, isn't it? Uh, just to make you aware, might be a slight delay in contacting the winners on this occasion because of our Christmas holiday, where we will be socialising, so won't we, rather than riding our bikes. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I might, um, yeah, might socialise. Hack, forward slash bodge of the week. I'll call you out then, didn't you I? You did, yeah. Uh, before we get on to this week's hacks and bodges, uh, apparently, Si, begging works. Uh, it because does. last week's hacks and bodges section, we've been sent these amazing key rings by Stephen of Orange. Thank That's you Stephen so Clark. much, Stephen. Those are so cool, aren't they? They are brilliant. No instructions as to how to make them yourself. No. no. So we can't nick his idea. No, but well done. They are super cool. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, we really like them, don't we? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, anyone else that wants to send us anything, we will gladly accept. <laughs> right, <laughs> next up, we have this from Jengle Dow. In fact, not next up, this is the first one. Uh, we wanted somewhere to hang the breakable baubles where the kids couldn't reach them. We have nowhere suitable in our house, so I hung a spare wheel from the ceiling and hooked the baubles on. Wow. That's not very festive, is it, if I'm completely honest? Can I say bodge? I don't want to seem like Scrooge straight off the bat there, but... It was slightly weird that you said wow to start with and then changed your mind. Wow. What? Does that mean I've got to give him a hack now? That's no, my first thought. No, was... uh, uh, sorry about that, uh, Jingle Dow. Yeah. That is a bodge. Massive bodge. Dude. Right. right. Unlike this one, what a centerpiece to go on your uh, your beautiful Christmas table. Uh, this was sent in by Kenyon Curtis. I made a Christmas tree. I have old cassettes, spokes, and a free wheel and a chain. Look at that a base made out of wood. Yeah, I think that one uh, by Curtis has been helped by the fact that it's on a, a Christmassy looking table. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Okay. No, it probably doesn't look like a Christmas tree, does it? They look like they might need a bit of degreasing, some of those sprockets as well. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I'm still going to hack for that one. Yeah, me too, actually. Hack. Yeah, well done. Uh, we also had this on the app from Alpen John. How to fetch a Christmas tree fast. Stick the stem of the tree into that bottom loop on a back tramper backpack and use a cord to tie the upper part to the backpack. Boom! Top speed, 55 k's an hour. No Whoa. worries, mate. Well, rather you than me, Alpen John, uh, but. Uh, it's a mighty Christmas tree and he looks quite comfortable. So yeah, fair play, should we say hack? I think we'll say hack because you love Christmas trees transported on bikes. Do, yeah, we've got one more as well this week. Uh, but before we get there, we've got this one from Bordy, which is um, like a kind of angle poise. I don't, I'm not a massive fan of that. Though. You know, well, yeah. he's made it Christmassy by putting that little tree next to it. But what? Uh, I quite like that design. That's a festive bodge, putting a Christmas tree in and saying yeah. it's a Christmas tree. <laughs> An old DT Swiss wheel cheese board and Ikea lampshade turned into a reading lamp. I'd say hack, personally. You yeah. go bodge. Well, right, it's a bodge. Uh, right, next up from the GCN app, this from alanbike.ro. How to transport a Christmas tree on a thule. I never know how you say that. Thule? Thule? Bike. Thule. Thule. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, there we go. I like that one. I think that's great. Um, Look at that, you just like loop the little uh, straps around the Christmas tree and away you go. Well, it's much better than getting all your needles in your car, isn't it? Yeah, it probably would come off the rack at 54k an hour, though, unlike Alp and John. Well, no, he's still... tied it on. Well, maybe it'll work then. Yeah. All right, let us know how you got on. Hack. Presumably, actually, you got on all right because you sent us a photo. Otherwise, it 
just been an embarrassing broken Christmas tree at the side of the road. But anyway, there we go. Right, what's next? Uh, this from Bryce A. Um, had a bit of extra steerage tube after slowly lowering the stem, but still wanted my TT bars at a bit higher and closer. So I threw on an extra stem and used an old seat post to clamp on the bars. Well, why not? Oh Look at that. Delo <laughs> Please tell me that's confined to the indoor trainer, because that looks like an accident waiting to happen, doesn't it? Yeah, bodge. Massive bodge. A huge bodge. Huge bodge. Yeah, no, don't, don't do that. Uh, right then, this one uh, from Edge Rattray. Uh, I took my bike on my festive travels, but forgot my bike light charger. This has blown my mind, Dan. So he made one. Okay, he said he inserted an aircraft connector contact with some heat shrink, this is all meaningless words to me, and a spare wire, I don't know what that means, uh, to create a circuit, then hooked it up to a 5.1 volt power supply. What word? That is next level hacking, <laughs> isn't it? I don't know what to say, well it's definitely a hack, it's completely over my head. 100% hack for That me. worked, yeah. that's a hack. Uh, next up, this from Adams on Kyle. Uh, or Adams and Kyle. I definitely need the additional travel for the hilly rides in downtown Chicago. Check it out, full suspension trike. I mean, there's a huge bodge, isn't it? There's a lot going on in that photo. I quite like the look of that, dude. Mm, do you? Yeah, I mean, it is a bit bodged, but I quite well, like I that. I really like it. We make one, I'll stand on the back, hold those little bars behind the saddle, and you can pedal along. <laughs> right. I, I wouldn't know where to start, mate. I really wouldn't. But the guy that can make charges from scratch. He could probably do one, couldn't he? Yeah. Weird that it's easier to buy the bits to make a charger than it is to go and find a replacement charger. What are talking about that? Well, I mean, I can't get my head around it. Anyway, uh, right, that is all uh, for this week. Um, as ever, please keep them coming in, either on the uploader or, of course, the GCN app. Caption competition time now, which is your weekly chance to win a GSIN Elite water bottle. Uh, we provide you with a photo, you leave us your witty captions in the comment section down below, and we pick a winner. Last week's photo was this one of Yolene Vashkuren, uh, kind of doing cycle cross, and uh, we got a brilliant caption in. We have indeed. Sorry, just the photo itself makes me giggle. Uh, right, this was sent in by Max Power Simon. Great name there. Uh, he says, caption. Never stand when you can sit, never sit when you can lie down, never ride when you can slide. Genius. Yeah, you got a good point there as well. I very much like that one, Max. Get in touch with us on Facebook with your address and we'll get this sent out to you. Uh, this week's photo is of the podium of the Men's Elite Cyclocross uh, from the World Cup in Namur on Sunday, which is very cold. Sai's going to get you started. Matthew van der Poel clearly delighted at taking his 57th victory of the season. Ah uh, yes, leave your best caption in the comments section down below and we'll pick a winner in two weeks time in 2020. Yeah, it's good mate, it's fine, it's fine. Thanks, I'll take that. We'll shortly be letting you know what's on the channel between Christmas and New Year basically, but first we're gonna go through our favorite comments from last week. Uh, starting from underneath last week's GCN show where Stylish Riding wrote in and said, Who's the dweeb wearing gold shoes with his helmet on the back of his neck? Uh, well, stylish rider, I'm not sure if you were joking or not, but that was me. Deliberately looking unstylish, I might add. Dweeb does kind of sum it up, doesn't it? But there we go. Look at your face! <laughs> not my fault. I didn't choose to have a gold face. You chose to have gold shoes. You lost the race. I didn't. There's quite a lot of people suggesting that I apply for a steward's inquiry, because Chris blatantly changed his back wheel as opposed to his front. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. the comments aren't all about me, Si. Also in from Callum Spencer underneath the same show. It's good that the stool's the right size, said Simon, yeah, was, looking yeah. at a picture of a stool with a lump of timber stuck on top to bring it to the correct level. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not quite sure how I missed that. But, um, it, I mean, it looked relatively pleasing to the eye, didn't it? Anyway, uh, right then, underneath uh, the video where um, I went to uh, meet Neil and Mac from the Sufferfest at their high performance center over in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, Fraser Goodwin uh, said, uh, ah, so Neil was a pro triathlete. Now we know why his top was on inside out last week. He just got a little twisted in transition and messed up his t-shirt as he pulled it on. But consummate pro, he carried on through the events to finish regardless. Yeah, no word on whether he was wearing socks actually that day. We uh, we couldn't see that, could we, on the um, <laughs> no on the Strava thing? But uh, the Strava apparently thing? it was something to do with a Back to the Future reference. That whole inside out. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, anyway, underneath the gravel upgrades video, 
Now, after suggesting that gravel, uh, road, gravel bikes, to say, are like retro mountain bikes, does seem now that history really is repeating itself, it does, though, doesn't yeah. it? Because we had this from Mr. Room, who's saying, adding an elastomer stem to the bike, it reduced shoulder and neck pain from washboarded gravel roads. Scott Phillips put, I fitted a red shift stem to my gravel bike, adds a little weight, but it deadens the high speed buzz you get on fire roads and reduces fatigue. And Paul Hewitt said, my upgrade is a suspension stem. Now, as any long time cyclist will know, Back in the day, late 80s, early 90s, Gervin had a flex they stem, did. which was uh, notoriously crap, wasn't it? Anyway, on the channel over the next week, on Wednesday, we're going to show you how to get rid of those annoying wheel suckers. Uh, that one comes to you from Hank. Uh, on Thursday, we've got cycling rules that are worth breaking. And on Friday, uh, we're going to let you know how to ride in the mud. Yeah, that's a cool one, that one. Uh, Jeremy Powers and cyclocross legend Tim Johnson uh, take you around the US Nationals course, which was very muddy, mm. wasn't it, and very technical. Uh, right, on Saturday, this is a cool one. So Jeremy got to go head to head, Tony Kinane, to see just how fit IndyCar drivers are. He is quite a fit one, isn't he? Is He's it? very fit, I've seen the video. Yeah, uh, but anyway, check that one out. Uh, and then on Sunday, we've got weird things that all cyclists do. Mm -hmm. I don't think turbo training at a Christmas party is in that one, which is weird. No, probably isn't, Si. Uh, Monday, it's the Racing News Show. Speaking of which, over on GCN Racing, we've got a load of live cyclocross for you over the next week or two. I think there's five races by January the 1st, so make sure you check them out if you've got some time and you want to watch other people riding their bikes as opposed to doing it yourself. Or ride your bike in the morning and then watch, obviously. We're getting on for the end of the show now, but there is still time for Extreme Corner. Although this week it's not it's not extreme in the kind of Fabio Vibma sense, is it? It's extreme in the sense that it's extremely cool. Anyway, Hank and Mark Beaumont have been over in Patagonia bike packing, which I'm quite jealous about. Anyway, there is a video coming to you in the new year, but here is a little sneaky peek. That is going to be a very cool video. Although I'm a bit worried for Extreme Corner. You said it's not extreme, but it's extremely cool. I mean, you should have something that's extremely tough, extremely hard. It's not really Extreme Corner, is it? Sorry. No, okay. It's just, um, well, just thought you might like it, mm. basically. Uh, right, well, that's pretty much all for the Christmas GCN yeah. show, which we made a massive effort for, as you can see. Uh, but we would like to say a very happy Christmas to you all and a happy new year as well. There's going to be some after effects, aren't there? Making it a little festive. Yeah, let's hope there's some snow coming down yeah. now, probably. It'd be great, yeah. Uh, anyway, please give the show a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Yeah. And if you would like to watch uh, another video, then do make sure you check out GCN's Presenter World Championships to find out which channel reigns supreme in a tandem race.